Aloha and welcome to the networking floor at BTC 25. I'm now joined by Philip Marangela, Chief Marketing and Product Officer at Edge Connects. And Phil, pleasure seeing you again. Yeah, it's, likewise, uh, yeah. The early get together for everyone in the industry. How many PTCs have you been to? I've lost count, to be honest. I mean, at least at least a dozen, but uh, uh, yeah. yeah. I had hair probably when I first yeah. started coming. So. Well, I had no idea what the distance was then, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so you were building it before you knew what it was. Yeah. But look, a lot has changed in 12 years. Uh, another, let's not come with COVID, but a lot has changed in 12 years. And now we are getting to a phase where the demand is so big, AI is coming in, it's completely reshaping the whole architecture of the data center. Yeah. How, I mean, what's your take on the current state of the market um, in terms of AI power? Just give yeah. us a, an umbrella overview of how you guys seeing things. Well, a lot has changed in 12 years, but a lot has changed in 12 months, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, the scale that we're looking to build out around the world is unprecedented, right? In terms of AI, and cloud was booming. And we were trying to keep up with cloud demand, and then you layer on AI, it essentially doubles the, the amount of demand. And so that puts constraints on power availability, that changes the calculus of where we go, how big we go. And the big thing for me, from a product standpoint, we've been really focused on the design. Mm -hmm. And being able to handle with the chips just dramatically, look, we've been cooling the data centers for air for 20 plus years, perfectly fine, and now you get to bring water to be able to cool these chips, and that's a that's an entirely new product, mm -hmm. essentially, mm -hmm. right? And so, being able to have a design that can support water, that can scale up to 300, 400, 500 kilowatts a rack, mm -hmm. to ensure that the data center isn't obsolete by the time it's built, mm -hmm. is really where we're kind of focusing all our efforts going forward. Before we talk about new facilities, because those will be easier to build because they are new. Yeah. When it comes to legacy facilities, things that have existed for five, 10 years, how right. do you adapt those to, to all these new things to, to, to sustain water, because it's super heavy? Uh, for sure, and you know, we're, we benefit from the fact that most of our facilities are build to suit, right? Mm -hmm. And so, for all of, in terms of having a retrofit, that's mm -hmm. not necessarily a challenge that we have, and so it's really all of our new builds, again, at scale, mm -hmm. we're talking hundreds of megawatts, these are campus builds, right? That's not the edge connects that you knew growing up, or when I started as well, right? These were small, purpose-built facilities at the edge, now it's massive purpose-built facilities around the world to support cloud and AI for these customers. Yeah. Well, Edge for you is just the name. Right. Because the, the, the portfolio is not Edge. No, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but how? But yeah. the Edge is coming back, right? With Influence, yeah, yeah, with Influence coming, and, mm -hmm. you know, and it's coming quick, that's where the Edge will also kind of regenerate mm -hmm. at scale, mm -hmm. right? And so, so it, it, it will still have relevance. So could then we have a, an Edge Connects and a Hyper Connects, so we're going to have two verticals of the business uh, going. <laughs> hey, look, again, it's always been about our customers and giving mm -hmm. them the capacity mm -hmm. where they want, when they want, and how they want, mm -hmm. right? And so the form factor, the location, it's, it's working with our customers to give them yeah. the, the solution they need or give them the edge they need to deliver their service. Yeah. So, and then when you look into the delivery times as well, because there's, there's more to build now, there's different cements, there's supply chain issues, a little yeah. bit more on the back of the demands, more demand than supply there is. Yeah. Have the lead, sti lead times changes, is that changed? Has that become a challenge on how you deliver these facilities? Yeah. Well, how, how long does it take to deliver 100 megawatts? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, For it's, it's, yeah, and, and you have to think in advance of, you have new equipment in terms of CDUs and, mm -hmm. You might be able to get CDUs, there's a lot of providers, but there's small components that could be 20 to 50 week lead time. So you really have to think through your design and all those kind of small variables to make sure you are ready for service when the customer needs it for, for AI. And again, as the chips evolve, they might be air today, and when you're talking about retrofit, but we have a design that can, can progress from that air to liquid journey and adapt as new chips come online in much shorter time frames so that you can do air, you can do liquid, or, or the combination of both. Mm. When you look into the state of the world and you look at all these cheap tension between US, China, um, cheap acts, there's a shortage of ships, how do you think it's going to impact the industry? How are we going to get delayed on, even more delayed on delivering these things because of uh, a shortage? Well, yeah, I mean, they just issued you know, the, the former administration, the Biden administration, in terms of chips and which countries can have it and so forth. So there's a lot of unknowns. So, you know, some of these markets in Asia or Europe, if you're kind of in that tier two bucket, can you get the chips? It depends on who's the customer. Is it a hyperscaler or is it somebody local? And so 
there's a there's a, an immense amount of unknowns which are giving customers some pause in terms of how much they're going to commit to certain uh, capacity requirements. And so we're really in this state of uh, flux right now. Okay. And then beyond liquid cooling chips and all that, what other technologies are you looking at or are you excited about that are coming up? Again, you are always looking at different technologies, whether it's cooling technologies, um, to ensure, it. and well, the other thing is power, right? We talked mm. on power. Follow the power. Some of the limitations are, do you have enough power from the grid? So we're looking at alternative power sources, yeah. right? Natural gas, and everybody's talking about nuclear, but those are years out, and so what are some of the bridge technologies that you can look at that not only provide alternatives to the grid, but are also sustainable. So you still want to try to maintain your sustainability goals as well. Mm -hmm. And then when we look into geographical bridge, yeah. um, this is the, the, where we start <laughs> with it. Let's start with the existing portfolio, the known portfolio. Yeah. How do the different challenges vary within the different regions, especially from a power perspective? Sure, um, sure. Because Europe, it's not Asia, Asia is not the US. And yeah. they all have challenges, but they all are different stages of the, the, the journey, so. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's start from, mm, from let's Asia, around, yeah. right? So we just announced Japan. So mm. what was interesting about the, the property and the location we got was the scale and the power availability, right? Power is a challenge in Japan, but we can bring power online in an accelerated yeah. fashion. What's the source uh, of that one? Uh, so in terms of grid power, we can get it yeah. within two years, right? Rather than, you know, Tokyo itself in five years. So yeah. we're in the Kyoto, Osaka area. Yeah. Jakarta, we've been building out there at super scale and we continue to buy land for expansion and so forth. And that continues to, to grow immensely, right? You've seen this, you have your event in Jakarta. There's tremendous demand from mm. all kinds of customers there. Malaysia, mm. same thing, Johor, Cyberjaya, we're in both of those. Uh, locations and tremendous demand there. We're in China with our partnership in Chiora and we're in India. India has been insane in terms of the amount of demand and capacity requirements there. So Asia is just full speed ahead um, and just runs the gamut. And we'll, I know you're gonna ask like, where's next? Yeah. We're actively <laughs> looking at other markets there. Yeah. But you know, at the scale we're talking about, that's well over a gigawatt mm. in, across Asia, right? And yeah. you're thinking about gigawatt plus in Asia, in India, in Europe, and in, in the Americas. Yeah. So four gigawatts five, over yeah. the next five years is trying to build out that. It's just insane, so this, the size. Well. Yeah. <laughs> four gigawatts, that's well over 40 billion yeah. too, right? Yeah. And so that's one advantage we have as well with EQT and our new investors, Sixth Street, Street yeah. And, and yeah. Does that mean you're going to bring more investors in? Because 40 billion is a lot of, um, it's a big bill to share. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. That, so being creative on the financing mm -hmm. as well as power mm -hmm. and um, the design is going to be key to be able to build that scale mm -hmm. for AI. Pushing the cord a little bit here, uh, maybe we we can pretend it's not about Connects, but with an IPO ever be of interest, would it work for, for a business like this? Would it, would, would it make sense you know, uh, as a way to raise capital? Um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of, uh, of the private providers that have had a long run-up of success, that's certainly going to be an option uh, for uh, a number of uh, data center operators. Depending on how the market goes and so forth, it, will, will it be attractive and, and, and so forth. Um, so, like I said, financially, there's lots of different alternatives that you can look at to kind of yeah. fuel or fund that growth that we're talking about. Well, there's no lack of capital, and that's one thing that we've, we've always keep hearing here. There's no lack of capital. It's just got to be creative yeah. on how you get the capital and how you deploy it. 100%. Because um, investors are becoming a bit more wary. It's all yeah. about power, and it's like, do you have the power? All right, let's go. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> uh, and then also having the blueprint, having customers. Yeah. But uh, and then, I mean, you've talked about Asia, India, yeah. Uh, Europe and North America. What about the other three? So Middle East, Africa, Latin America. Latin America, you're there. Yeah, so, and I actually didn't touch on North America, you yeah. know, because a lot of our focus the last few years has I been international side, yeah. and we're coming back to the state. We, we obviously had our edge footprint. We're going at scale in North America. Atlanta was a big investment, big campus there. Um, you know, we're in other markets at scale that we haven't announced yet. Um, and, you know, we'll probably add a few more, but. It, what we're looking to do is fewer new, but much bigger, yeah. right? And so- What so, would be like the average size, 500? Yeah, one. 350 to 500 yeah. to start with line of sight for a gigawatt, right? So at least. Uh, you asked about South America, obviously Santiago is a big market for us and, and building out there, we're in Buenos Aires, we're in Bogota as well. And so 
Egan, you know, Brazil, it's a huge market. One thing that's nice, they have a lot of power. So it's very attractive and, you know, I'm sure you'll see more growth there. But we're seeing so much demand in some of these major core yeah. markets. That's what's driving kind of our focus in some of the those these big ones. And then these second ones, I'm sure they're gonna come around yeah. and, and get the attention of providers like ourselves. Yeah. I mean, the demand is so much, it's so easy to, to lose that focus and just kind of spread yourself so thin yeah. uh, and trying to do so much and then so much becomes too much to handle. Yeah. Uh, but what about Africa? I think that'll be like the last mile for you. Yeah. Right? Um, you know, we're always looking and there's been opportunities in there and so forth, but the scale, it's still not at the scale that we're talking about, even in a Jakarta mm. or, um, you know, we're building out at scale in Frankfurt and so forth. And so, you don't want to stretch yourself too thin. You want to be able to focus and execute, right? And so kind of for us, it's you're going to see this trend. Now we've got this global footprint focus on fewer, but much larger uh, market uh, capacity build outs. And then in terms of offering beyond just, just hosting data, um, valuation metrics are now really looking not only at team, not only at real estate, at the power, but they also look at the services they offer on top of the infra layer, so software, managed services, and all that. What is Edge Connects doing around that? What new services have you got to add value? Um, to, to the yeah, project. <laughs> we've always, we never wanted to kind of go up the stack and kind of compete, if you will, with our customers. We just really wanted to focus on helping enable them and stay true to what we're good at. Um, and so, you know, I think it will just continue as a build to suit, build to scale, uh, data center provider of, of supporting the AI guys, um, the cloud guys. Um, and, you know, if anything, you might see some of super scale enterprise AI that might yeah. make sense for us to dip our toe into in collaboration with our partners and bringing the AI solutions, particularly from an inference perspective, yeah. like we can build out a campus like geared toward, be it financial, healthcare, automotive verticals that are going to be some of the early drivers and adopters of AI. Yeah. So that, that could be yeah. something you see in the future. Because uh, now you mentioned like healthcare and all that, how would you dissect the, the different clients that you've got? Do you have like percentages, like government, finance? Is well, like I said, share, uh, 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 yeah. we're primarily hyperscale, hyperscale. Yeah. Uh, service providers. We have AI, yeah. um, AI cloud providers, if you will, mm -hmm. and then network service providers yeah. And, and, yeah. and content service providers from our legacy yeah. business. But that's been the core focus yeah. and we're going to stay true to kind yeah. of those guys and what we do for them. So, okay. If you had to pick one design change that needs to happen across the entire data center industry when it comes to building these facilities, what would you say we are doing wrong and we really need to change? Well, the big challenge, Zhao, as we're talking about, as we move to liquid, there's standards. Every customer we're talking to has a different philosophy in terms of their delta T, their water flow rates, their filtration, and all this kind of stuff. And it, it's a real challenge for us as a data center operator. We're all going to be challenged to be able to support these guys. And they're, so if you can have that ASHRAE kind of uh, uh, capability or standards established for uh, water, then that will really help simplify the design so you don't have to kind of have something so broad and, and flexible to support every different company, I think that will be really helpful, right? But uh, um, yeah, that's that's certainly uh, some some area that I, I see we can take advantage of. Very interesting. So now we are PTC 25. When you come back here for PTC 26 for your 13th PTC, yeah. um, what's the one thing you would like to have happened in 12 months time? just like catch my breath. I mean, it's been <laughs> insane, the amount of travel and the amount of like, and so you can actually not, enjoy, you subside. can enjoy the <laughs> island, right? Like, yeah. um, you know, like I said, Randy, my boss, he's had 85 meetings. It's just, everybody thinks it's, it's, uh, it's a joy, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's a, it's a yeah. gauntlet of meetings and, and, but it's exciting. Mm -hmm. and, and kidding aside, I mean, it's exciting to see how the industry is changing, the data center designs, the use cases, the app. AI has disrupted everything. We're going to use AI. We're going to also use AI and how we build and manage and operate and all that kind of stuff. So it's just, we've never seen anything as transformative as AI to our industry in terms of the opportunity and how we build and all that kind of stuff. So. Again, it's going to be an entirely different conversation next year. It's not like, oh, the same thing. Like, you're not just adding new markets on the map. You're just building entirely new things, and we're going to have more and more use cases and examples of what AI can truly do 
for people, for companies, for the industry, and all that stuff. So it's really exciting yeah. times. Oh, and we're not even talking about the changing of the data center itself with AI. So how will, how will AI manage and um, run the data center? With, well, with robots like and power and procurement, and being smarter yeah. about how you access power and dynamically, you know, sh you could shift between the grid and alternative sources. Um, you know, we're we're actually piloting a program with a company called Gridmatic, where we can, you know, kind of do that on a minute to hour basis rather than you know weekly, monthly, and yeah. so forth to be smart about how we procure our power yeah. in a sustainable way. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I mean, everything's going to change. Yeah. So outside and inside the data center. Yeah. Uh, Philip Manager, Chief Marketing and Product Officer at Edge Connect. Yeah. Thanks so much for talking to me. Excellent. Um, as for your home, thank you for watching. And do check our website and social media for the latest digital infrastructure news from across the globe. At the tech capital, you lead, we report. Bye for now.